Hello, and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Rafael, and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a review of the Seiko SRPD-53, otherwise known as the 5KX Pepsi. Now, as you can see here, this watch is all steel, bracelet, case, Pepsi bezel, and it also has a beautiful blue sunray, sunray dial. Now, I'll be getting into all those details and much more in the review, so let's get started. And here we have it, the Seiko 5 Sports Pepsi. It's gonna be referenced SRPT53. You can see it here on my wrist. Not a small watch, but Nevertheless, it fits quite well, especially on this bracelet. I think it brings the package together very, very nicely and very comfortably. Now, this being the Japanese version, the Japanese market version, it's going to have a secondary reference. That reference is SBSA003. The only difference that I've been able to find between the Japanese market version and, let's say, the international versions is the printing there at the bottom of the dial. You can see it says made in Japan. Other than that, aesthetically it's the same. The movement is exactly the same. Literally the only difference being where it was assembled, which to some collectors that's quite important. To others maybe not as much, especially when you consider the premium that you will likely pay for a made in Japan version versus the international or the non-Japan versions. Now this watch is gonna be the traditional SKX and Seiko 5 Sports case size, which is 42.5 in diameter. You can see there I'm measuring from the nine to three. Thickness is 13.4, sounds about right. Lug to lug 46. Yep, again. And lug width is gonna be 22, so that's a pretty common lug width size if you were thinking about maybe changing the bracelet on this one, which I don't know if you would. Uh, I've actually, I've found this bracelet to be quite comfortable. You can see it's quite fluid. There's plenty of space between the links. Not to say it's loose, but I think when bracelets are too tight or maybe you have to wear them in, it can be uncomfortable the first couple of weeks while it accommodates to your wrist size, but no issues with this one. A uh, nice brush finish on the top of the links and on the sides, high polish, very much reminiscent of a Rolex Oyster bracelet, but of course in the Seiko version. Onto the clasp, we can see again it has the same finish brushed on top, polished on the sides. As far as security, we have the fold over system if you will, and even after you lift that part up, kind of playing with the clasp here and you see it still won't open. For it to open, you press the two buttons and it finally gives way, which I think is a, it's a very secure mechanism. The inside of the clasp looks just to be stamped steel. Again, not too many details, but it gets the job done. One more thing you may have noticed, but the bracelet does have a bit of taper down from the end links here and through to the clasp, which I think is a nice detail. Back to the case, you'll see we have the similar finishing theme, brushed on the top of the lugs, polished on the sides, of course, our traditional Seiko four o'clock crown, which in this case is gonna be a non-screw down crown. So you can see here, I have it at position zero all the way in, and I can spin it both ways. What this means for the watch is that the water resistance is only 100 meters, as opposed to some older Seiko watches, particularly the SKX, which I believe was 200 meters and it did have a screw down crown. This one does not. I haven't really had any issues with the decrease in water resistance. I don't think I've ever been um, 100 meters deep, let's say, and if I, if I am, I probably have bigger problems than my watch not having a screw down crown. The crystal that you see there is a traditional Seiko Harlix crystal, which is scratch resistant, not as much as a sapphire, but gets the job done once more. We do have our diver's bezel here, unidirectional, with that Pepsi theme insert, which is 
let me just get this back to the index. You can see there is a little play there in between the clicks, but it's not too much of a bother. Our printing or our minute markings here are silver metallic, which is a nice contract and I contrast, excuse me. I do think it goes well with the silver, obviously of the stainless steel. No luminous pip here at the top, but there's plenty of luminous to be had on the dial. You can see that we have applied our indices, again, generously loomed at night. These are a bright green, as this is the Seiko's Luma Bright. The hands there are also a polished finish and of course, generously loomed. One last detail there on the hands. You can see the second hand has, it's almost cantilevered here. It does have a luminous pip at one end and then the other side of it is a polished silver. So a nice contrast, makes it quite easy to read the seconds if you're ever looking to get that precise. We do have our contrasting day date window here. It's gonna be black text on a white background. And let me just make sure, okay. So you can see that I'm in the last position, but I'm going to the first position of the crowd to show you the two languages that exist here on this Japanese version. As you can see, that was English and Japanese. Um, this is another difference that you'll find with the non-Japanese market versions where they'll have a main language, usually English, and then the second, I've seen Arabic, I've seen Spanish. So if that's something that concerns you or you want a language other than English, certainly be on the lookout for that. One last detail here on the date is that Saturdays are usually in blue and Sundays are usually in a red font. But the rest of the week goes back to the black on white color. Now I was rotating clockwise to change the date. Counterclockwise is gonna be the day changing mechanism. I wanna take a look here at the back. This is Seiko's upgraded 4R36 movement. As, as you can see there, as I move the watch, the rotor winds, so it is self-winding. Nevertheless, it also has a feature where you can wind it by the crown. So when the crown is at position zero, I'm rotating it clockwise. I was trying to get it picked up there on the mic, but you, you can wind it with your hand. So the watch will either charge up with your movement or if it's been sitting for a while and you want to set it and get on with your day, just wind it, set the time and then let it go. Back to this movement for our 36, it's a Seiko movement. It's gonna have a 41 hour power reserve. You can see it's got some nice finishing, obviously not too much. The, the price point of the watch doesn't allow for too much time to be put into finishing the movement, but nevertheless, it's done quite well. The accuracy on this piece is gonna be about plus 45 to minus 35 seconds per day. So again, quite admirable, let's say for, for a watch of this price point. One last thing regarding the movement. You can see here, the second hand is taken away. I'm gonna pull out the crown to the second position and the hand stops. This is what's known as hacking seconds. And let's say if I wanted to set the time super accurately, I could wait till the reference time zone lined up there and I'm ready to go. Push the crown in and the watch gets to ticking. But there you have it, the Seiko 5 Sports Pepsi SRPD 5.3. And there you have it, that's my review of the Seiko 5 Sports SRPD 53, also known as the 5KX Pepsi. Now, if this video left you with any questions or comments, make sure to drop them in the section below. And for pricing and other information, check the links in the description. As always, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more wristwatch and men's lifestyle content. As always, I'm Rafael, this is Bespoke Unit. Thanks for watching.